Iowa caucus night. You know, I have listened for probably, well, I mean, years and years every time this comes around, but for the past two weeks at least, I've listened to the Democrats talk about how useless it is to start the primary season in such a small state. So, certainly, running the caucus in such a small state shouldn't be a problem at all, right? Uh, They tried to, I think, promote an app uh, to report the results. The app, by all accounts, just like doesn't work. So we've been recommended to call into the hotline and the hotline has not been responsive. I I I can hear you. Have you gotten any explanation, Sean? Sean, have you gotten any explanation at all uh, as to what's going on? No, I have not. No. Uh, I'm just waiting on hold and uh, doing my best to report the results from my research. What are you hearing? I know you're listening to a conversation uh, from the Iowa uh, Democratic Party. Um... Uh, This is a real coincidence, Wolf. I just got off hold just now, so I've got to get off the phone to report the results. All right, uh, go ahead and report your results. Can we listen in as you report them, Sean? Yep. All right, let's listen. All right. (laughs) Okay, hi. Hello? They hung up on me. (laughs) They hung up on me. Okay, I've got to get back in line on hold. Um, They just hung up. So frustrating indeed. Uh, Sean, uh, we're going to stay in close touch with you. I have to say the videos I've been making lately have been quite serendipitous. I was looking into the Chinese Nationals and the Thousand Talents program in Canada before the novel coronavirus even hit the news wires. And then last night I decided, you know, over the past few days, I decided not to go the route of constantly henpecking about the coronavirus. And I actually backed up and covered something that I had researched prior um, that I thought was important, and that was perception management through a, 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 a program called AVID that was used in all of the small broadcasting outfits. Um, I played the video that showed all the Sinclair media reporters all saying the same thing, you know, showing that The 4 a.m. talking points that Q talked about were real. And we talked about Avid Leadership Plus. And the thing about that program is it was made to do live, real-time updating on elections. And it it, it accepted uh, information only from specific news wires. And we went over all of that. And then lo and behold, today... Here comes a story about how the DNC is using a new program for perception management. And the same company that is um, creating that program was evidently also involved in creating the app for the Iowa caucuses that has turned into you know, a disaster to keep it PG. And so I guess today, um, in the continuation of the thread about perception management, um, about um, centralized control over elections, about the dangers of electronic elections, continuing on with that, we're going to look into this story. And um, there's a lot of different angles that we're going to cover it from. So uh, hold on to your pants. Here we go. So we'll start off by reading the statements from the Iowa Democratic Party, because there's two. The first one was at 11.31 p.m. on the 3rd. Quote, we found inconsistencies in the reporting of three sets of results. In addition to the tech systems being used to tabulate results, we are also using photos of results and a paper trail to validate that all results match and ensure that we have confidence and accuracy in the numbers we report. This is simply a reporting issue. The app did not go down, and this is not a hack or an intrusion. The underlying data and paper trail is sound and will simply take time to further report the results all right second statement from the iowa democratic party came the next day february 4th at 9 14 a.m 
We have every indication that our systems were secure and there was not a cyber security intrusion. In preparation for the Caucasus, our systems were tested by independent cybersecurity consultants. <coughs> Crowd strike. <laughs> I'm just joking. As a precinct caucus as precinct caucus results started coming in the idp ran them through an accuracy and quality check it became clear that there were inconsistencies with the reports the underlying cause of these inconsistencies was not immediately clear and required investigation which took time as this investigation unfolded idp staff pre-planned backup measures and entered data manually this took longer than expected why? As part of our investigation, we determined with certainty that the underlying data collected via the app was sound. <laughs> While the app was recording data accurately, it was reporting out only partial data. So one could say that it, it was recording all of the votes, but it was only putting out parts of some of the votes. I would be very interested to know which votes were not reported on. Anyways, we have determined that this was due to a coding issue in the reporting system. I mean, can the learn to code meme be any more appropriate to anything ever? This issue was identified and fixed. The application's reporting issue did not impact the ability of precinct chairs to report data accurately because of the required paper documentation we have been able to verify that the data recorded in the app and used to calculate state delegate equivalents is valid and accurate precinct level results are still being reported to the idp while our plan is to release results as soon as possible today our ultimate goal is to ensure that the integrity and accuracy of the process continues to be upheld as of right now, they're going to release half the data here in a little while, and I guess half later. Why not all the data together? I don't know. But forgive me if I find this all to be a little bit fishy. We have the DNC, who has a history of working with companies like CrowdStrike, NYR1, um, they have a Debbie Wasserman Schultz and all the things that went on with that. We have um, the Democrats who ran a, a, a counterintelligence operation on Roy Moore um, and actually posed as Russian bots. And then as they were posing as Russian bots, then turned around and reported on themselves as Russian bots that were connected to Roy Moore. This is all documented. So... Forgive me if I am a little bit weary of this explanation that everything's okay, the app ran perfectly fine, we have to use it again in Nevada, so like everybody chill. I'm not buying it. I don't think many people are buying it at all. <laughs> I think, you know, everybody's having the same exact thoughts. Um, 2016, it probably took off in Bernie's direction and then things had to be shut down and changed. So I did my typical thing and I went a few months back and I searched and I found some interesting information about this whole situation from Bloomberg. And so I'm just going to read this to you. It's November 25th, 2019. The left's plan to slip vote swaying news into Facebook feeds. Democratic strategi strategi strategist Tara McGowan's Courier Newsroom is out to counter the right-wing echo chamber with a dose of hyper-targeted hometown news. There's Tara, the proprietor of Acronym, the non-profit company that owns the for-profit company Shadow. That screwed up the app. In the days after the White House released a readout of Donald Trump's tw July 25 phone call with the president of Ukraine setting off the impeachment saga, Trump's re-election campaign and the Republican National Com Committee made a major financial move designed to shape public opinion. Operating jointly, they dumped millions of dollars into Facebook and Google ads to send a counter-narrative coursing through the internet. In this alternate reality... Trump was the victim, not the perpetrator, of an effort to enlist foreign interference in a U.S. election. 
He was fighting, not encouraging, Ukrainian corruption. And Democrats were the bad guys. When President Trump asks Ukraine to investigate corruption, went one ad, the Democrats want to impeach him and their media lapdogs fall in line. Exactly. Almost instantly, conservative websites and Facebook pages with millions of followers lit up with Trump's exculpatory storyline, creating a kind of parallel universe in which a reader seeking to understand the day's headlines would come away learning roughly the opposite of what the facts of the Ukraine scandal appear to show. This is the worst gaslighting I have ever seen in a mainstream media news article, and that is saying something. Sorry about that. A Democrat strategist named Tara McGowan watched all this unfold with particular alarm. McGowan, 33, <clears throat> is the founder of Acronym, a nonprofit digital strategy group that organizes progressives online to vote and volunteer. Lately, she gained notoriety for her outspoken criticism of her party's inability to challenge or even clearly comprehend Trump's dominance of the digital landscape and the threat it poses to Democrats' chances in 2020. Facebook's decision to allow political ads with false information was only, inten only intensified her worry. So worried. The information ecosystem has changed, she said, recently in, in the bustling hipster corporate WeWork office that houses Acronym's headquarters in Washington. McGowan is hyper intense and talks about democratic politics in a tone of alarmed disbelief, as if she's the only person at a party who realizes the house is on fire. We live in a distributed digital media environment. There's no regulations. Mis misinformation not only runs rampant, but it's now being condoned by the most powerful social media platform in the world. Coming out of the 2016 election, the question she wrestled with was how Democrats can defeat the huge right-wing echo chamber. The answer she landed on is that they don't need to. Hillary Clinton lost because Trump beat her by fewer than 80,000 votes in three cru critical swing states. Yeah. To McGowan, whose professional expertise lies in reaching voters online, the rise of misinformation coincides dangerous, dangerously with another trend, the death of local news. Ding! So last episode, I had just got done talking for 30-some minutes about how the DNC, the Democrat Party, Dianne Feinstein, Feinstein, whatever, had control of avid... And they were pumping the news and media that they wanted out there through Avid into on literally onto the TVs and straight onto the teleprompter. So if the Democrat Party feels as though it's losing control of its ability to do perception management through the local news, through the Sinclair Media Group, where I played all those newscasters saying the exact same talking points at the exact same time. They need to regain a new type of control over the information. And they're literally telling us that in this article. And yeah, there has been a, a, a there is a, a, a relation there. And it's been great that we've been able to go around the news. And what um, Tara doesn't understand, along with um, the rest of the entirety of the DNC is that it doesn't matter if she puts stuff on the internet. It doesn't matter. Because the people have the freedom to go and seek truth themselves now. They don't have to be dependent on a narrative from another person. So it goes on to talk about how Facebook was inundated by conservative propaganda. Mm-hmm. And when the local news died, you know, they lost their control over the information landscape. And it talks about how McGowan has raised $25 million from a host of wealthy liberals uh, to establish a for-profit media company called Courier Newsroom that has already started rolling out digital newspapers with local reporters and editors in six key swing states, Arizona, Michigan, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Wisconsin. And it finally gets to why they think she's so awesome, because she's using her war chest to use targeted Facebook ads at people in swing states. That's the big, whoa, she's a genius. 
<clears throat> so she it shows how she's um formed all these basically uh like a network of small independent liberal online news outlets that she can pump out her same 4 a.m. talking points that she used to give to the news media. Now she's going to pump them all out onto these digital, um, online, local newspapers, like The Patch or something like that. And that's where she's going to deliver the new leftist propaganda. It's, it's really pretty smart. And the problem with her genius idea is she's trying to corporatize, monetize, politicize something that happened organically with Trump. The left, they can't meme. And all the donors in the world aren't going to fix that. (laughs) Okay, so now let's start talking about who are these people. Because I'm... I'm failing to understand how the same people that are in control of devising a weapon to blunt Trump's biggest advantage, um, a, a group that is financed by specific people, is somehow involved in vote counting and reporting. Obama operatives are devising a weapon they say will blunt Trump's biggest advantage. A pair of Obama-era operatives are launching a massive digital advertisement by ahead of the 2020 election to ward off what they say is President Donald Trump's online dominance. Never happen. A nonprofit group called Acronym and a left-leaning political action committee are unveiling plans to spend $75 million on digital advertising to rebut what they say is Trump's nearly insurmountable edge in battleground states. According to the New York Times on Monday, a pair of Obama-era operatives are involved in the plan. If the things that need to happen don't happen in these battleground states between now and and May or June, our nominee will never have time to catch up, said David Plough, who managed former Barack Obama's 2008 campaign and was key advertiser to him in 2012. Plough, a member of the acronym board, said Trump is way ahead of the game. There is an ins- enormous amount of danger between now and then, he said, noting that Obama had a similar advantage over Senator Mitt Romney in 2012. If the hole is too steep to dig out of, they're not going to win. The president's campaign already plowed over $26 million so far in- into Facebook and Google, a number dwarfing that of former Vice President Joe Biden, as well as Senators Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, and South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg, all of whom are running for president in 2020. Tara McGowan, there she is again, the founder and chief executive acronym, who was also a digital producer for Obama in for Obama for America in 2011, said alongside Plough in an interview that their campaign would begin immediately and focus on crafting a negative public perception of Trump before the primary election concludes. So we just heard from Tara that she immediately set out to craft a negative perception of trump online and here we have the tech firm behind the iowa caucus disaster also played a role in creating a covert democratic propaganda media outfit the firm responsible for the app that caused delays in voting and counting votes during monday's iowa caucuses had a role in developing an outlet promoting democratic propaganda outlets ahead of the 2020 election could you imagine if this was reversed Campaign consulting nonprofit acronym owns Shadow Inc., a company that operates the app Democrats hope would simplify the process of counting the votes in Iowa's roughly 1,700 precincts. Officials across the state struggled to use the app, leaving the results of the caucuses in limbo. Remember, it was recording every single vote, but it was only reporting portions of the vote. So who else is involved in Shadow, Inc.? Well, the Daily Caller goes on to say that Shadow, Inc.'s website has scant information about the firm and its employees, but a review of social media accounts shows that three of the Washington, D.C.-based 
firm's top executives worked on the 2016 Hillary Clinton campaign. The CEO of Shadow Inc., Gerard Nimira, was the director of product on on Clinton's campaign. Ana Reo, the product manager for Shadow Inc., was special assistant to the chief technology officer on Clinton's campaign. And Krista Davis, the chief technology officer at Shadow, was a software engineer on Clinton's campaign. Hey, maybe she was wiping the servers. Campaign finance records show that several state Democratic parties and multiple presidential candidates have paid Shadow Inc. for tech services. Can you imagine this? Iowa State campaign finance reports show that Iowa Democrat Party paid Shadow Inc. $44,666. You got that? On November 15th and $18,517 on December 6th. The Nevada State Democrat Party paid Shadow $58,000 on August 27, 2019 for techno- techno- technology services according to Federal Election Commission re- records. And Mr. Mayor Petey Buttigieg's campaign paid Shadow $42,250 on July 23, 2019 for software rights. The former South Bend mayor came under some criticism Monday for declaring himself victorious despite the dearth of results. Iowa, you have shocked the nation. All By all indications, we are going on to New Hampshire victorious. It's hilarious how obvious this is. This man donated $42,000 to the company that is in charge of tabulating the votes in Iowa. He gets on Twitter and says, Iowa, you have shocked the nation. By all indications, we are going on to New Hampshire victorious. Insinuating that he has some information that the rest of us don't have. How does this just go unchecked? It's unbelievable. And I'm hearing on the news that Pete Buttigieg is going to be the surprise, that he did do well. Well, isn't that fancy? You know, a lot of people were thinking that this whole thing got shut down because Joe Biden was doing so horrible. And I don't think that's it, because I honestly don't think the people in that party are counting on Joe Biden. I think the only thing that they're united against is that they cannot be a Bernie Sanders And that's what's causing most of this. But this man tweeted out last night. None of us knew what was going on. We still haven't heard the results from Iowa. But Pete Booty Judge knew. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the Hillary Clinton tweet where she put the little picture of herself up on Twitter and said, happy birthday to this future president. And it reminds me of the same thing. Both of these people had have some kind of knowledge that makes them feel confident enough to put this on Twitter. Make sense? You know, I'm disappointed in the Democrat Party and in Democrats. The inability to see past Trump and fix the primary was always just so mind-blowing to me and now we have this group here they are once again doing shadowy things with shadowy programs and shadowy companies why are their company names always like CrowdStrike and Shadow I mean it's almost like they're rubbing it in our faces Tara McGowan is a vehement anti-Trumper who is in the news that I just read you saying her number one goal is to cause a negative perception of Donald J. Trump. And here she is developing, paying for the app that's tabulating counts in the Democrat caucus in Iowa. When are we going to start realizing that we have got to start putting P. 
people, real people, normal people in these positions. We have got to get rid of this lifelong bureaucracy where these bureaucrats get in here and they stay around longer than the daggum politicians that we vote in and out. Like they run the joint. They're the ones that we've got to get. That's why I talk about the senior executive service. That's why I talk about government service rank. Because it's the bureaucrats. When our elected officials show up at the House, at the Senate, in the, in the White House, that surround them and tell them this is how it is this is how it's been and we've had presidents try to stick stand up to them before and you know they killed kennedy and they gave reagan a bullet and the world has got to wake up to this we have got to wake up to this at Shadow's webpage that the article mentioned had scant information on it, and it does. Um, but it does show kind of what their whole shtick is. Every month we'll bill you an automatic increase your message balance depending on your subscription tier. They basically blast out messages for people. Here's their base price. You can do it by subscription. So it's with this infrastructure, inf infrastructure that they used, infrastructure, excuse me, that they used to also report the tabulations in the Iowa caucuses. I'm sure it was the same infrastructure. Um, I'll leave this um, link in the description. Of course, it's talking about data it's always about data data is where it's at now it's all that matters data 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 and i know we all have this nagging voice in the back of our heads that's telling us that what's going on in iowa ain't right that they're holding the vote counts back they're talking about only releasing half if the app had completely shut down, Iowa is required to have paper ballot backups. Why did they not just do it the way that they had always done it before and call in the numbers? What is the problem? I think that it wasn't just not reporting portions of the counted votes, but it was not reporting specific votes for specific people. That information would never be released, of course. But the way that they phrase it is automatically suspect. It was tabulating all the votes accurately, but it was only broadcasting out to everyone a curated voter list. Or as they say, portions. And if you think this is all just one big happy accident, I want to read this for you. Democrats used Russian tactics in Alabama. This is the Washington Post. Now they must swear them off. The victims of social media manipulation have become the, the attackers. The, a New York Times article detailing how a group of Democrats borrowed Russian tactics in last year's Senate race in Alabama in an ominous development in a dawning age of information warfare. The Times reports that the operators of a secret experiment to undermine Republican candidate Roy Moore created a Facebook page to support a write-in conservative. They also, according to an internal report, quote, orchestrated an elaborate false flag operation to link Moore's campaign to, quote, a Russian botnet. News organizations picked up on the influx of accounts and reported the supposed foreign interference. This sunk his campaign. The effort was small, costing its organizers $100,000 in a $51 million election, but that does not make it any less worrying. Domestic actors on both sides of the aisle, it seems, are willing to turn the tricks that Russia has used against the United States against their opponents. And this, you know, I'm reading you this, and we're just going to allow the Washington Post to go with the Russia narrative. I'm, I'm assuming everybody who's listening to my channel knows that that's been blown up. If not and if you want me to go through it i can we can i'll i'll take a few steps back and then we can go through russia gate fisa gate all of that if that if that's something that everybody wants to do no problem 
Um, each time one party promotes a false narrative or unleashes a horde of internet trolls. <laughs> I have yet to see a horde of internet trolls from either party. The other has more incentive to employ those same techniques. So see here, see how it's, it's the conservatives' fault that the Democrats did this. Because each time one does it, it causes a tit for tat. Do you see how they report that? The United States has no system in place to stop the spiral. It still doesn't, and that in politics means it absolutely is still being done. The country stands at a critical juncture. Either society wards off the spread of these strategies or they become the new normal. One answer is self-restraint. Internet billionaire Reed Hoffman, who says he unknowingly funded the Alabama project, was right to apologize this week. Senator Doug Jones is also right to demand an investigation. But candidates, political committees, big non-governmental organizations or NGOs, and others should also pledge not to engage in inauthentic activity. Bullshit. I don't want any pledges. I don't want any on your honors. I want an investigation and laws put in place. It may be unrealistic to expect the president and Republican allies to commit to such an agreement. This is the same thing they said about Trump when he said when he would refuse to agree to um to step down if he wasn't uh, reelected. It's like you guys said that he wouldn't accept the first election and it was Hillary and her supporters that are still unable to accept that election. Given their record record on confronting Russian subversion, Nobody, and this is, I hate to say this because I'm like literally qu quoting Trump, but nobody has been harder on Russia than Trump in my lifetime. But the upcoming presidential primary will offer Democrats a test. Hmm. Already, in entrappy feuds are spreading on online networks as they announce their campaigns. Contenders should promise not to do to their rivals what Russia did to them in 2016. Wow. Structural changes will help, too. Bipartisan appetite in the Senate for protective measures was curbed this year by a recalcitrant House. With Democrats in charge, things could change. Democrat or Congress should start by authorizing more information sharing between the Department of Homeland Security and federal party committees and campaigns to catch manipulators in the act no matter where they come from. Members of both Moore's and Jones's staffs, for example, noticed something was off. And so, if you think that they're not capable of doing it, they got caught doing it. You see, the funny thing about it is, Trump is being charged with election interference. This, this is election interference. Paying Fusion GPS to create the Steele dossier from Russian information and using it against Donald Trump to obtain a FISA warrant that is election meddling. You know, I see this and I talk to people and I'm at least heartened to see that people aren't buying it anymore. Everybody that I talk to knows, well, we don't know what is going on, but we know something's not right. And boy, isn't that true. One more example. So in 2016, Donna Brazil was sharing the debate questions with the Clinton campaign. She was working in conjunction with Hillary Clinton against who? Bernie Sanders. That's right. And some may say this is a small example, but it is not. What we're talking about here is collusion between the Democrat, the DNC candidate, and the news media to work against the outsider candidate of the DNC. Now, have we seen any examples of the media colluding to
to go after the outsider in the DNC this election? Hmm. Debate. I think you called me a liar on national TV. I think you called me a liar on national TV. Let's not do it right now. You want to have that discussion, we'll have that discussion. You called me a liar. You told me. All right, let's not do it now. The disagreement stems from whether he once told her that a woman couldn't be president. And now you can go ahead and try to tell me that that mic was accidentally hot that they didn't know that that mic was hot. But we know that that's not true. They left that mic on, and they knew she was going to go waltzing right up to him and do exactly what she did. Does it mean that the establishment media and the DNC has picked Warren? Not necessarily. I have seen her um, meeting with Hillary Clinton lately, and I have some information about that I'll put out in a new video, but I don't think they've necessarily picked Warren as much as they're just going to take every opportunity to shoot at Bernie Sanders that they get. I think that Bernie Sanders is just as terrifying to the DNC as Donald Trump. So to sum it up, it looks like the DNC has changed their methods of perception management, which kind of stinks because I did make a 35-minute video about it yesterday, but there's still good information in that. It looks like they finally realized that the new world is the world of social media, that they can't be in control of everything that's broadcast into our television. They must also control everything that is broadcast to our smartphones because that is how they see the world. That is how they think they must win is by taking over everything and then quieting dissent. Thanks for uh, sticking with me. I've got more videos to come, you guys. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks.